Okay, this video looks at how we can determine the enthalpy change of combustion by experiment. So the basic apparatus is to have a fuel burner that has a liquid fuel inside that goes up a wick and then can be lit at the top. And above it we've got some water that's being heated that could be in a tin can which has better conduction but it could be in a beaker as well. And we measure the temperature change of the water in the beaker. So important things that we need before we start, we need to know the mass of water inside that beaker. So Density of water is uh, one gram per centimetre cubed, so if we know the volume, we know the mass as well, or we could just weigh it. It's important to know that before we start. We need to know the initial temperature as well before we start heating the water, and we need to know the mass of the fuel before we start burning it, and the mass of it at the end. And I should also say we also need the final temperature of the water too. So basically then, you pre-weigh the mass of fuel, you pre-weigh the amount of water, you measure the temperature at the beginning, you light the fuel for a period of time, you measure the maximum temperature change, and then you measure how much fuel has been burnt. Okay? Limitations of this method, there's a lot of heat lost to the surroundings. Now different methods can improve this with insulation, but basically you're always going to get some heat lost to the surroundings. And when I say surroundings, I don't mean to the water, I mean to the air around. The heat capacity of the equipment. So to heat up the water, we have to heat up probably a tripod first and the gauze, and we have to heat up whatever is containing the water, the beaker or the tin can. So this, the, all these pieces of equipment have their own heat capacity and will be absorbing energy. And also, we can't guarantee that there's just complete combustion here. There could be incomplete combustion occurring as well, and this will affect our results. Okay, so once we've got the information then, Use a Q equals MC delta T. M is the mass of the water in the beaker, not the mass of the fuel. It's the mass of the water in the beaker. So if you know its volume, you know it. Uh, you'll know its mass because its density is one gram per centimeter cubed. The heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram per kelvin, and the temperature change is the delta T. Then we want to find the enthalpy change of that reaction. Remember, this is the this will be the energy gained by the water because it's always going to be an exothermic reaction. The water's going to gain energy, so this will be a positive number. So delta H then, in, it'll be, this will be the system rather than the surroundings, will be a negative number, it'll be the reverse. Um, we just take that Q, divide it by a thousand, put it into kilojoules, and then divide it by the number of moles of fuel burnt from the fuel plant. So let's have a look at an example. Okay, so here we've got 1.5 grams of propane one hole. A heated, a heated 250 centimetres cube of water by 45 degrees centigrade. Find the enthalpy change of combustion. So M is the mass of water. So if it's 250 centimetres cubed, so that would be 250 grams. Remember, it's not mass of fuel. So don't, that does not go into this equation at all. Heat capacity of a water heated, 4.18 uh, joules per gram per kelvin. That's a constant. And it says it heated it by 45 degrees, so 45 goes in there. So we times them together and we get uh, 47,025 joules. Okay, so that's how much energy the water has gained. How much fuel was burnt? We got to the mass of fuel, which was 1.5 grams, divided by the molar mass of the fuel, and in this case it's propane 1 ol. The molar mass of propane 1 ol is 60, so 1.5 divided by 60, so it's 0 0.025 moles were burnt. So then we take, we do the negative, remember because we're reverse, it's going to be an exothermic reaction, so it's got to be a negative number negative, um, take here, there's Q, divide by a thousand, so we've got it into kilojoules, and then divide by the number of moles, and that gives us our delta HC, our enthalpy of combustion. So that's how, that would be the energy released when one mole of propane one mole is heated. 